If you go to github.com slash csgf g library, in the docs subfolder, I've prepared a tutorial, this tutorial MD files. You can also reach it um, from the agenda web page. So actually, we are going to create first a user, login the user. Then uh, we try to browse all the repositories on glibrary. We create a repository, and this should be done by the administrator of glibrary. We set SEL, and we create collection items and so on. So let's start by doing the first step, creating a, creating a user. So we're going to use CURL to handle with the REST API, but also I use Postman. I don't know if you know, it's a quite easy to use system to um, make um, examples and the REST API you can uh, change the verbs, you can uh, set uh, headers, you can, uh, let's say, uh, change the body type, and so on. It's quite easy to work and test with REST API. So first of all, uh, we are going to create a demo repository. Inside this demo repository, we are going to put some collection. And into this collection, we will put data from external MySQL database or um, we use a local uh, um, MongoDB database. So the first operation is to, of course, to create uh, a user. So I will just copy and paste from here. And here, I'm going to create a user that we call, uh, OK, I have to change because I already used demo user. So I will call demo user 2. As you can see, we run this, this call against v2 users. Uh, I have a tool installed on my machine that is called JSON that is able to uh, parse the outputs and uh, pretty formatting it. All right, so I get an error because it said uh, emails already exist. That's why I used the same user yesterday. So. I have to change also its email to demo user 2. OK, so we have, uh, we have created a demo user 2, all right? So if we want to log in the user, we need to use the login API and pass the username and the password. So we do that. Two, yes. Demo user two. Pipe JSON. And here we get the information about the login. The most important thing, of course, is this. This is the token. Through this token, we can run all the following APIs. So working from the command line, it's um, a good tip to save this token in an environment variable. So I export the token, and I will save it. So the next time I will need it, I just refer the, the variable. OK? So now we have a token. We can um, work with the G library. Actually, if we try to use the token, for example, here to browse, because we have this repos that is the endpoint for all the repository, with the token, we get this. Oh, sorry, let me put JSON so we can pre font something. Yes, authorization required. That's why the user has not rights to browse all the repositories. Only the administrator can do that. So we need first to uh, log in also ad as administrator and to create a new repository. 
and the new repository should be assigned to the demo user too. So at the moment, we don't have uh, in our server a way to do through a web page. You just need to send an email to us. If you need, for example, an account, you just send an email. Uh, to, um, there is uh, the reference here if, where you need to, um, to send an email. And um, we will create uh, a repository for you. Yeah, you need to send an email to sg.license, ctnfn.gt, with your username, so you create the user, and the repository name. So let me, one second, uh, uh, create a token with administrative rights. I've already um, admin login. Okay, don't read the password, please. Too late. All right. So I have my, here, my um, administrator token. So now everyone is deleting our repositories. Let me, let me do, let me save this admin token. So I have both the token and the admin token. With this token, I can make administration request. So if I try again the call that I've done before, and I replace token with admin token, now I get the list of all the repositories that we have already in the server. Gridcore, Box, Fanny, Lezioni, Daria is there for projects that we're working on. So we see some of this these uh, uh, other properties here. So, okay, now we have the admin token. Let's create now a new repository that we want to assign to our demo user to um, demo user to uh, user. Let me go back to my slides, repository creation. Okay, so as I've said, we use the REST principle. So we need to create something, we do a post. So what we do here is creating a post on the repos endpoint, and we pass the name of the new repositories. Uh, so let's change the name of these to let's call the demo two. So post on the repos endpoint. Here we go. So we have now a demo to uh, repositories created. Now it's time to assign an access control list to this uh, repository for the uh, demo user too. Currently, only the administrator can access that mount point, that endpoint. So we need to we need to set set up an Axial for the repository. Again here, we use the payload saying uh, username, demo user two, and we give to the, rep to the demo user two read and write permission. To the repos, we need to change the endpoint, that's the repo two, and underscore SLS. So we are writing a new SLS on this. Okay, so notice that we are still using the admin token and not the, let's try it. All right, the SCL has been added. So now we can switch token and we can try to browse this demo to new repository. So we use a get. All right, you get an empty array because there is nothing, there is no collection into this uh, repository. Let's create a collection. Now we can still work with the user token because the user is the admin of its own repository. And uh, as I said in the, in the slides, we can create a schema-less collection. 
or a fixed schema collection or using data from a remote de mm, repository. We will do the first and the third because the time is not enough. Let's create a schemaless collection. So we just need to create, make a post this time into the repository. It's demo two with the name of the collection that you want to create. We want to create a movies collection into the demo two repository. All right, the collection has been created and the Axial assets on the list has been added to the movies collection. So if we do again the browse of the repository in the demo repository, we see now that we have a collection and its path is v2 repos demo2 movies. Very easy. Now it's time to populate the collection with items. So I've created here some content. Suppose that this collection should contain data for a movie. I like a movie that's called Anger Management. I don't know if you have seen it with Jack Nicholson and Adam Sander. If you haven't seen it, watch it. It's very funny. So let's change the destination repository. Every time I edit, because uh, the exercise is, has, has been done with demo 2016, while here I'm using the demo 2. So what I do is just doing, again, a post, because I'm creating a new entry into repos demo two movies and passing the payload. Because this is a schemaless collection, I can um, create any document I want with any scheme I want, and the document can, be, can have a um, different schema. They are not to be of the same type. So let's run the, the call. OK, so let's verify that with doing uh, again a uh, browse. So we are browsing demo two and we see the, mo the movies, but we need to browse into movies. Okay, so this means get, get me back all the movies inside this collection. And here we have uh, just this collection. Let me add um, some more, the same entries, two or three times. And now let's browse it back. OK. So here we have uh, five or six records. Of course, every item has an ID, like this one. It's auto-generated. Every time you make a post, a new ID is generated for you. But you see that you can also use the primary key of your uh, database as ID. So if you want to access just this, this item, again, following the REST principle to individuate the resource, just put the name of the repos, the name of the collection, the name of the, of the item, and you get back only that item. You can also delete an item issuing a delete edit an item using put. I'm not going to show all of this because they are quite, quite easy to do. Now, let me show, for example, uh, how to create a collection with a fixed schema. Because you want that your user or your application need to <coughs> create uh, records or items that have always the same uh, fields. When you create a collection, you add an extra property called schema, where you describe the name of the attributes and the type. For example, here, we are creating an actor's collection that are three attributes, name of string types, date of birth of date type, and movies. And, and notice here, we are doing something new. This time, we don't want to store those items on the local MongoD database uh, that we have uh, um, installed through glibrary. But we have another database called
call um, jeweler 3 dt we need to provide the, the credential to this database. Again, forget this password after this presentation. Anyway, there are firewalls, so you won't be able to access them. So don't lose time to try. And now, uh, let me one second delete these actors because I already have here. This is my um, control panel for my SQL database. I should have, uh, okay, I, sh I can use another, no, database demo. Let me delete uh, the table, otherwise the, the demo won't work. So here I have a MySQL database on a remote server and I already created a demo database inside it. So this, this call will create a new collection and create a new table. Let's run this. In demo two, so we are going to create actors. And actors will be the name also of the collection. Okay, let's check what happens in the SQL database. As you have seen, it has been created a new tables that is formed by the name of the repository demo2 plus the name of the collection that we have created. If you inspect the schema, it just does the schema that we described here in our, in our uh, JSON request. We can also add an entry, but we, we skip this. It's the same because we already have done that. It doesn't change anything from schema-less or with schema. It's just the same API we post into our collection. But now let's do something more interesting. So suppose you have already a database. And here I have a database called Classical Models. It's a database that is um, distributed with the MySQL tutorial. It has uh, several tables like products, like uh, product lines. It's a, it's a database of uh, classical cars, model cars. So suppose that you want to create a collection that let you access through REST API this table. So you want to create uh, a REST API over the product tables in the classical database, classical model database on a remote MySQL server. And glibrary can do that. What you need to do is, again, create a new collection. You give the collection a name. We choose products, but you can, in principle, choose any name you like. And you use this flag, import true. Actually, it doesn't import data. It just uh, provides access to the remote database. So, he make queries to the remote database and retrieve back data in JSON format to the user. Here you say, what is the target table name? And what is the collection DB that you use? So the database, the type of database, we can use Postgres, you can use MongoSQL, the name of the database, the username and the password. And again, you need to do a post on the repository you want to create the collection to. So let me copy this. All right. It said collection and ACL created. So this means now that we can try to browse and see what happens. So we should have our demo two. Into demo two now we have three collection. Movies is a collection stored in the MongoDB database. Actors is a remote collection stored in Jula database. And products is the collection with data coming from the MySQL database. All right, 
as you have seen, you have all the records from the MySQL database into, into JSON format. Let me show now the query language I was talking to you before. So for example, you can use the filter parameter with some options. For example, limit, skip, limit just three records and skip 10 records. Or if, well, if you want to order items by quantity in stock, let's try one of this. So demo two, <coughs> products. You can do that. So here you, say, you see 9997 and so on. It's an order in ascending, ascending order, but you can change also in the ascending order. You can, uh, for example, make uh, using um, comparison operator, like uh, where the buy price is greater than 90, or um, the price is between uh, 60 and 50. So as you can see here, using the square brackets and the where and the operator, you can make complex queries. Here you can use the end operator. You say where both the buy price is greater than 50 and the quantity stock is greater than 8,000. Finally, you can also use the, the like operator. So here, let's say I want all the product name where uh, that contains the word Mercedes. So I use the like operator, like you used uh, in the C MySQL, and you pass the percent as our world chart. All right, let's do the last calls. I want to show how to create replicas, and I'll, I'm done with this demonstration. So for example, we have um, this car, mm, the S18, Let me retrieve it. So products slash uh, what's what's missing here? Products slash all right. Notice here that the primary key of this table as became the ID, the item ID of the resources. So suppose that we want to attach an image, a JPEG image of this, um, of this car. I've already, let me find uh, an image on Google. of a Mercedes-Benz 500 Special Roadster. All right, let's choose one of those. This can be nice. Let me store it in my, my home, mercedes.jpg. All right. So to create a replica, we need to run three steps. The first thing is to create a replica entries in our, uh, for our uh, item. The second step is to create a temporary URL where we actually upload the file. And the third step will be to do the real upload using the put commands. So let's do the three steps. The first step is to say, we want to create a replica, and we want to store it on a Swift, Swift cloud storage at this uh, URI. Currently, here we are using the, the full URI 
of the Swift endpoint. But in principle, the, uh, what generally is done is that the administrator of the repository will put a default endpoint. So you don't need to know where the file should be uploaded. So here I'm saying, OK, let's create a replica URI. Mm -hmm. What I made wrong. I think that I have some, sometimes it's better to create through, let me use a post. So I want to make a post with the token. All right, headers. Authorization, and I will do the post on this URL, and the body. Maybe there is, uh, I have some parsing problem. Swift, Mercedes 2. All right, it worked. So here we have the ID of the replica. That's what I needed to, do set, to run the second step that used put and asking for a temp URL for the upload. So Yuri is this one, okay, and the demo Repo. Okay, I have uh, 30 seconds to do the upload. Otherwise, <laughs> the, the URL will expire. So I have to do cur. Uh, minus t and the URL. All right, no errors, this is good. So the upload started. I was between the 30 seconds because the temporary will expire. And now let's try to retrieve the actual replica. So you just need to do a get on the item, no? So let's do from scratch. So we use the token. And we use the endpoint. So G library, v2, slash repos, slash demo2, slash products slash uh, the ID of the item uh, that was the model of our car. Then underscore replicas. I don't remember what was the ID of the replica, so let me print out just the replica ID was this one. So let me add the replica ID at the end. All right. Now we have 30 seconds to download this file. It's another temporal for get permission. If I go to a new web page and I put this, let me see, some file has been downloaded, it's been downloading. It seems it's the right one. Yes, we actually download the files 
without using any Swift credential back in our machine with just a simple URL. The last thing I want to show you is a web application that we are working on on those days for the Daria projects where we use GLibrary API to make a repository on, uh, on uh, lemmas of uh, the uh, Bavarian dialects. At the moment, I have a demo running here. Here, um, the Austrian Academy has provided me with uh, a database with uh, uh, several uh, uh, lemmas. It's all in German. I'm sorry, I don't speak German, so I don't really know. Uh, it's like uh, 20,000 items. And uh, here I'm using a framework that under the woods makes queries. So I've implemented here an infinite scroll. So every time I scroll down, it's hitching queries to the REST API of GLibrary. GLibrary will access a remote MySQL database and transform this. So for example, if you want to look for item of uh, author Egel, I can apply filter, Egel, Egel, no, Eugen, yes, Eugen. And then I see one, something that starts by material. OK, so I filter down from 20,000 entries to just 10 using the REST API of GLibrary under the hood. So now I can uh, access some of those. And uh, some of those as uh, replicas. And here, for example, I can have a look to some files. Empty networks works, goods works, good. I should just get the, using the replicas features of the G library, it will uh, get back the replicas for the items I'm clicking for, all in a transparent way, all using the G library, G library API. So actually here is doing REST API, the same commands that we have seen just two minutes before. We can also even download the entries and see the some uh, lemma, I don't know, ancient uh, Bavarian dialects information that can be quite nice, I think, for people that do this kind of works. All right, I think I'm done with, with this demonstration. Thanks a lot for listening to me this morning, and uh, I'm here in the following days. If you want more, in more information about that, please don't hesitate to contact me. Okay? Ciao a tutti. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks.